Hello, people of the world. My name is Daniela, and today we are going to make strawberry shortcake cookies. The caveat to that is that this is the second video of my high school memory series. And if you go check out the last video, which I will link up here somewhere and down below, you'll learn all about my freshman year. This video will talk about my sophomore year and the many uh, childhood slash high school drama memories that carried me to where I am now. These are the ingredients that I'm working with. Obviously, I don't have the cutesy ingredient clear containers that you see online and on the food blogs, but this is what we're working with. I will link down the recipe down below or somewhere up here, wherever the YouTube's let me. And before we get started, don't forget to subscribe, press that like button, press that bell button, get notifications for the next video, which will touch on my junior year. And I hope you make these cookies with me. And if you don't, I hope you at least stay along for the chat. All right, let's get started. Okay, so a quick recap if you missed last video, which I highly encourage you to go watch. I graduated high school in 2015 and I started high school in 2011, which means my sophomore year started in 2012. To begin the cookies, we have to get a medium bowl and we will combine sugar, lime brown sugar, flour, baking powder, oil, and vanilla. So it'll be one fourth a cup of sugar. And we are going to preheat the oven to 300. One tablespoon of light brown sugar. Six tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Half a teaspoon of baking powder. And this is to create the shortbread crust or the shortcake crumb for the cookies. Four tablespoons of canola oil. Four. Half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And once all the ingredients are in your bowl, you're going to mix it. So sophomore year was right after I had gone on a, I think it was a summer camp. I don't know, but I told you in the last video that I was in the youth group band. I, I was in the worship band. So I spent a lot of time in church during my sophomore year of high school. I think that was the time in which band was a major part of my life. I would spend almost every evening after school in church rehearsing for the band. We were in competitions, so we would rehearse quite often and it's something that I loved at the time. I was a singer for the band on sort of picture somewhere, maybe here. And I really loved it. But sophomore year was a little more involved for me. I had more friends, not only in school, but also in church. But of course, God was a priority at the time. Once you have your shortcake crumb mixed, you're going to get a baking tray with parchment paper and you're going to put the mixture on it making sure to spread it out okay so going back to high school I believe sophomore year I don't think I mentioned it in the last video 
but I I started college classes when I was 14 and it wasn't like AP classes or um, dual credit classes where you'd only find high school students. I was sitting next to 30 year olds, 40 year olds, sometimes 60 year olds in class. And that was a very cool and interesting experience for me because it just, it, it had never really happened. But prior to being eligible to take these college classes, we had to pass a test. And I don't remember what the test was called. If you're a former high school classmate and you care to share, uh, comment down below what that test was called. But I remember I failed the first time and I didn't want to fall behind my classmates. Uh, I didn't want to waste a whole year or semester not getting any college credit. So I immediately retook that portion that I failed and thankfully I passed, which allowed me to start college classes at the same time as the majority of my classmates. However, it wasn't until that second semester of freshman year that these classes started. So my first semester of sophomore year was my second semester of college. And by that time, I was a lot more confident about my ability to be successful in a college class. And I was a little less intimidated by that concept. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm doing this right, but this is what this looks like. This is supposed to be the short cake crumb for the cookies. We're gonna put this in the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for a total of 15 to 18 minutes. So I'm gonna do 16 minutes and a half just to be safe. Next. I'm just gonna use the same bowl because I'm a big fan of Les Dish's Happy Life. Uh, so in this bowl, we're going to combine strawberries, lemon juice, strawberries and lemon juice. So first I have my strawberries here, but I'm a baddie, so I haven't cut them. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, so I have my cutting glove on because I tend to cut myself a lot and my amazing boyfriend bought me this glove. So we're gonna cut some strawberries. We need enough for two thirds of a cup. I'm just gonna put what I cut into there. Some things that we can go over regarding my sophomore year is some of the clubs that I was a part of which I honestly, it's been so long. And it, if you don't recall, the reason why I'm doing the series is because next year marks 10 years since graduation. So I thought this would be a fun way of memorializing my life back then and how far I've come now. Like I said previously, Victory Early College High School did not have any extracurriculars. However, on Fridays specifically, we had what were what was called club time, which there were a, a num numerous different clubs that we could join. These clubs didn't necessarily involve activities outside of school, but they were a form of entertainment per se. Some examples for these clubs were yearbook club, photography club, workout club, gaming club, etc. I was in workout club, I think. I don't know. I, I went through different clubs throughout my years there, but I do know that I was in workout club at some point in my high school career. If, if I wasn't in 
this club during my sophomore year, forgive me. I, like I said before, I have a terrible memory when it comes to my own life. I was a workout club. We would do Pilates a lot. And the reason why I joined this club and not any of the other fun clubs was because I needed to work out. I needed to be my healthiest version. I've always, as a child, felt like I was running away from my family genetics, specifically. I, there's a long history of diabetes, heart disease, you know, cholesterol, high blood pressure, etc. And as a child, this was something that came to my attention very early on because I remember, I think it was in first grade, you know, there were school nurses and there would be a yearly physical. And in one of the physicals, the nurse, felt it was appropriate to tell me that I probably had diabetes. And that really scared me as a child. So my entire childhood, I was trying to run away from that reality. Uh, but spoiler alert, I now have diabetes. And here we are making cookies because life is too short. I was in workout club. We would do Pilates a lot, yoga. I remember there was specifically one student that led the class for the most part. She would lead us in different Pilates classes. And, and this, the clubs, the club meetings for every club was on Fridays because we were college students and college classes typically happened on an AB schedule. So Friday was a free day for the most part unless we had high school classes that we needed to take care of. But for the most part, Fridays were free, if, as I can recall. Like I said, this high school did not have any extracurriculars and I've never necessarily been a big sports fan. So believe it or not, during my, the entirety of my high school trajectory, I never once attended a sporting event. And if I did, it was not for my school. And it was simply just to go hang out with my middle school friends who were in traditional high schools that did have sporting events. But I think that was maybe on one occasion but it wasn't necessarily memorable because uh, like, I, like you, you can see, I don't really remember it. And the reason why I only put the glove in one hand is because this is my cutting hand. So the likelihood of me accidentally cutting myself while holding the knife with the same hand, I think is quite low. That theory remains to be tested. So the strawberries are all cut up. Clifford, do you want a strawberry? Sit, lay down. Roll over, roll over, roll over, come on. Roll over, roll over, Clifford, roll over. Roll over, roll over, roll over. Sit, come on, come on. Lay down, roll over. Oh, good boy, good boy, go eat your strawberry. Next, we're gonna put in one teaspoon of lemon juice. That was lazy, I didn't want to squeeze lemons. So, here we are. And you're gonna mix that. And then we're going to set this aside. Next, we're gonna grab a mixing bowl. We're going to cream the butter, brown sugar, and granul granulated sugar for three minutes until light and fluffy. We're gonna start with 12 tablespoons of unsalted butter. Then we're gonna do one cup of light brown sugar. Looks like our crumble is ready, so we're going to get it out of the oven.
and set it aside to cool. Next, we're going to do a quarter cup of sugar. Next, we're going to mix this and we're going to mix it until light and fluffy. And this is what it's looking like for me right now. Once we've done that, we're going to mix in the egg and the egg yolk and vanilla extract. So I've actually never separated an egg, egg yolk, so wish me luck on that. All right, so there goes my egg. And then we're going to do an egg yolk. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to try again on that one. This is my second attempt at separating an egg yolk from the egg white. I've seen people do it, but I've never done it myself. And I think you're just supposed to. I think this is good enough. Next, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. We're going to mix that until it's combined. Once that's combined, we're going to go in with two cups of flour. And two tablespoons of flour. one teaspoon of salt one teaspoon of baking powder and half a teaspoon of baking soda now i will say that this is the part where i messed up because it was actually supposed to be one teaspoon of baking soda and half a teaspoon of baking powder but we'll see what happens now we're going to mix that until almost combined Okay, my memory card was full, so this will have to do. We're supposed to then fold in the crumbs that we created earlier and fold in the strawberry. So we're going to do that right now. Then we're gonna take an ice cream scooper with a parchment lined uh, baking tray and we're just going to scoop a bunch of these cookies onto this. We're gonna freeze it for two to three hours. And after that, we're gonna bake them. a lot left over so I'm just gonna freeze it for future use while we wait we can go over some of the other memories from sophomore year I did not have a job sophomore year I really tried I applied to so many programs but not so many programs so many jobs but none of them ever really called me back because it's hard to get experience when you don't have experience, but you need to have experience in order to get experience. So it, it's just, it, it was just a never ending cycle. And sophomore year, I was 15. I wanted to get a job and I think I might've gotten one interview and one offer and that was at Panera Bread. But my dad felt like Panera Bread was below me in some sense and even though I really wanted him to let me go and interview at Panera Bread he was really upset and did not let me go. Any in terms of any class projects that I remember to be quite honest everything's a blur when it comes to that. I don't remember any projects from sophomore year unfortunately. 
if I were to see pictures and maybe it'll refresh my memory, but I don't remember any. Any memorable school trips didn't really have any. Like I mentioned last video, most of our school trips were to go tour colleges and the one college that I really wanted to go to, we had already gone freshman year, so I don't really remember any new colleges or any new trips that we took sophomore year. I did, however, learn how to drive sophomore year. My parents paid for me to go to driving school and I had a instructor and I obtained my permit, my student permit at 15. And did I always drive with an adult? No. Was I ever caught? No. I was one of the first people in my group of friends in high school to drive which was a little troubling at times because there were times where I felt like maybe I was being used for transportation, for my car, and I didn't like that feeling. So sometimes I would still ride the bus anyway. I didn't attend any dances during sophomore year because I was a church girl. I don't really remember much else, but let's go through some of the screenshots that I obtained from my posts in sophomore year, the posts that I posted on that Facebook group page for our high school class that I told y'all about. Post from August 28th, 2012. Does Mr. Tigret require a binder? Mr. Tigret was our world history teacher. He was, he was also a character. If you know, you know. And I honestly did not learn anything in his class. I've always found history to be quite boring, mostly when it comes to learning about the different wars, and I, I've just never found it entertaining. That post was seen by three people. Unfortunately, no one was able to help me. <laughs> and I don't remember if Mr. Tiger re required a binder. He was definitely a tough love kind of teacher. I do, I did appreciate him. Uh, I thought he instilled discipline in a lot of us, and sometimes that quality is quite useful. Something else, post from September 1, 2012, LOL, Mrs. Graham would burn this car if she ever saw it. Mrs. Graham was our English teacher sophomore year, and Ms. Graham, if you're watching this, I still love you. I found your class very entertaining. But one thing about Mrs. Graham is that she hates the color pink and a lot of students would tease her in that sense and would dare her or make her wear pink or buy things that were pink for her. That post was liked by 10 people, seen by 10 people. One of the comments, LOL, amen to that. And yeah, Ms. Graham is awesome. She went to my wedding. We're still in touch. She's great. She is someone who I aspire to be. Post from October 2nd, 2012. Okay, so here's what we do for Graham. I meant to put quotes. Sorry. LOL. Once again, I've taken the role of helping my classmates out on homework and tests. I also went through a period where I wanted to perfect my cursive writing because I don't know if kids learn cursive nowadays, but I remember it being a short class in elementary school and I wanted to keep that skill intact for myself and because I felt, I feel like a lot of people don't write cursive anymore and I just wanted to be, you know, that cool kid that knew how to write cursive. That post was seen by two people, liked by one. No one really gave a shit. <laughs> post from November 1st, 2012. Here you go. Pallid, pale, paltry, worthless. Panakia, a creel. Panashi. Confidence of style, pandemic, widespread of disease, pandemonium, chaos, candor, gratifier, indulge to pimp, panoply collection, paradox, self-contradiction, 
paradigm a typical example. I have no idea what this is for, but I would assume that it was also for Ms. Graham, Mrs. Graham and her class. I don't know what any of these mean, except pandemic, obviously we learned that real life example back in 2020 and still ongoing. Other than that, I don't really use any of the other words in my everyday vocabulary. That post was seen by nine people, six people liked it, and there were 45 comments. One of the people said, okay, I really, really hate to be the bad guy here, but I don't think posting the definitions on the class page is a good idea. I know you're trying to be helpful, but this could be partly why some people don't pass if they just copy, paste, and print out the definitions. What are they learning? The act of researching the words and manually writing them down actually helps commit them to memory better. Seriously, guys, it only takes about five minutes, but it can save you some studying time. Sorry if I offend anyone, but I'm tired of losing to the freshman. Then someone said, to be honest, I always get the vocab words from here and they actually help. I think it depends on everyone's will, who actually studies or not. We can't control who wants to actually know this stuff and who doesn't. What I try to do is that I get the words from the people who post them here because I tend to not understand them when I write them down. I might consider lazy for doing that. Some people appreciated me trying to help other people didn't. And the funny thing is that that back and forth with the person who didn't appreciate it was who then eventually became my high school bestie. June 6th, which I suppose was the last day of my sophomore year, I said, guys, well, the ones I talked to, lol, I apologize for not saying my goodbyes. I couldn't go to school today since I'm sick. Just know that I love y'all and I wish y'all a happy summer. I hope to see y'all next year. Love y'all. And that's one thing I didn't remember. I didn't remember that I missed the last year of sophomore year, but that post was seen by 11 people, liked by 11 people. Comments were 14. Someone said, uh, go away, Daniela. Shout out to Hector. That is my sophomore year recap. I, sorry if it wasn't more exciting than my freshman year, but I spent a lot of time cooking. Those cookies will be ready soon, tomorrow. Hello, this is next day, Daniela here. So this is me trying the cookies. And I'll show what the cookies look like. Not very impressive, honestly. I think the moisture from the strawberries affected the texture of the cookies. So they're a lot, a lot softer than usual other cookies are. And I'm gonna try one. I mean, it's good. I also wonder if maybe the fact that I accidentally switched the measurements between baking powder and baking soda made a difference, but I don't care enough to try again. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, subscribe, hit that like button, hit that bell button, and hopefully we get to bake other things in the future. Bye. <laughs>